East guys, um, we're here tonight at part of the Fort Pitt tunnels. Uh, this is one of the guard houses. It used to be connected to the main Fort Pitt um, tunnel system. We'll take you inside and explain a bit more in there because we're sort of a bit exposed here, but follow us in and we'll go from there. Yeah, we see the All right. Uh, so as I said outside, this is part of the Fort Pitt tunnel system. It used to be connected to the main part of Fort Pitt. Um, it has been blocked off. I'm leaving it as a, just a small section of it, but we thought we'd sort of show you around it because it's just like part of the history around here. Um, so as you can see, sort of from all the all the brickwork, it's very similar build to all the other Napoleonic forts that are around here. Um, now this would have been just sort of a, a defendable point that would have aimed out over the dry mode um, and allowed the people in that they wanted to get in, get the people out that they wanted out. Um, now originally, as I said, it would have been connected to the whole of the fort pit tunnel system um, by a stairwell that went down into a tunnel, which goes underneath. As you can see, and as we know from most of the Napoleonic tunnels around here, you're quite easily able to stand up in any of the ones that have been built. So you can just see how much rubble we are actually on top of. Um, as I said, it would have originally went into the main uh, fault, fault pit blockhouse um, that was underground through that tunnel there. That this tunnel has been completely uh, blocked off. There have been people that have tried digging it out over the years, but to not a lot of success. Um, there was an air vent. He's on the top of there. Do you want to try and climb down? There's something I'll move out of the way. Now, originally what would have been slightly different about the floor in here, where most of the floors uh, throughout most of the other Napoleonic faults were brick, these were actually slab lined. Um, that's what a lot of what we were climbing on going through that tunnel. Was. <coughs> Someone's tried uh, cutting that out and digging it out underneath, hoping that that went somewhere else as well. Mm -hmm. Now the, uh, the air shaft that you were looking up actually came up there. Another firing window. 
Where the roots come in. Some chunky roots in it. Yeah. Now, I'm not quite sure why this whole little section here was built in this way. Um, it's quite unusual because you've got ironwork that looks like it was for some sort of sliding door or something that would slide across. Um, and it's built into the corner with one fire window and one doorway that would have gone into the dry moat. Um, and one of the other things that everyone always seems to picture when they come in here is the, uh, the front end of the bike that has been in here since it got opened up pretty much. Yeah, those forks have been in time. <laughs> There's quite a few pictures throughout the years of those. Seen that's aged over the years. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure it started bright orange in a couple of the photos that I've seen. But yeah, that, that, that would have been one of the slabs that would have been on the floor. As you can say, as I say, it's, it's very different in comparison to a lot of the other floors that were mainly brick lined, unless it was the steps that had more, more of the slabs on around here, um, which does give it a little bit of a difference. Um, and the how open it is here. There's there's very little graffiti, um, apart from sort of some of the chalk doodles that you can see about. There isn't much spray paint graffiti, which is always nice. It's a very small section, um, but it's just a nice one to sort of come and have a look at and sort of see how, how the brickwork's done. Uh, I hope you guys sort of uh, enjoyed this small one, and until our next one, see you later.